Holy shit, Architects has a new album. Oh my god. Hello and welcome back to the channel, unless you're new, in which case, hello, how are you doing? Make sure to subscribe if you like the content you see here, check out my channel, see if you like other stuff, uh, and subscribe if you like what you see. Uh, especially if you're into guitar oriented stuff, I have a creative writing thing that uh, will have a new video out every day for the next week. Uh, so make sure you are subscribed so you can see that. It has something to do with that over there, that thing over there. Today we are going to be doing a reaction video to Architect's new album for those that wish to exist. This is actually going to be a reoccurring review series, if you will, that I will be doing, not every week, but as I feel necessary, if there's something worth talking about. I'll go ahead and lay out how these reviews are going to work, and then uh, we'll go ahead and jump in. And uh, yeah, like I said, if that's something else that you think is cool, uh, let me know down below what albums I should be keeping an out for that are coming out soon and then hit subscribe so you can obviously see these uh, reviews when they come out. So the basic idea for this series that I want to do is wait a week after it comes out to actually voice my opinions, thus the name of the series, The Week After. The reason I want to do that is a lot of people like to react to things on their gut. And I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with that. We should trust our gut instincts on things and our initial reactions. However, uh, a lot of things aren't what they seem at first. There's a ton of albums that I get really excited for. And then when they come out, I love it. But then as like my hype for it dies off, I'm, I realize it's not as good as I thought. And then flip wise, there are some things that when they first come out, I'm surprised and I don't like it but then it grows on me over time. So either way, that's worth exploring. And a week is a good time to reflect on all of that because uh, I mean, at that point you had the opportunity to listen to it a couple times. I wanna start each episode off with just going over anything that is important that you should know going into it, whether it's uh, some drama with the band or uh, where they're at or where the scene's at, or if there are member changes, uh, anything important like that that should be addressed uh, to better give context for the album. Then I'll kind of go a little overall what some generalized information is and uh, any maybe I touch start touching on some of my thoughts in there. From there, go into track by track what I think of each song and then end it out with my overall thoughts and opinion and then giving the album a letter grade. And lastly, before we get started, this is entirely my opinion. I don't really care what you gent kids think. It's not going to weigh on my opinion, but uh, if you do disagree, I am interested in why. And so you can always leave a comment down below, even if it's as simple as giving it a different letter grade than I did, either uh, better or worse. So let us jump into this video, shall we? So Architects have been making the big metalcore moves for quite a while now. I recently, as in like a couple months ago, uh, went back and listened to their entire discography, listened to all of their albums, and really pretty much all of them are like at the worst, pretty good. A couple of their albums I think are absolutely phenomenal. And I think I am in the majority where I would uh, probably mention that Holy Hell is my favorite album by them, which is their 2018 release, and this is the album that is following that. So basically, Architects was presented an interesting predicament. They just made one of the best metalcore records in a very long time. They just made what is maybe their best album. So it's like, how do you follow that up? And I think that combined with I mean, literally every other metalcore band is at least kind of experimenting with uh, a rock side of themselves. So I think those two things together led Architects to want to make more of a rock album. Um, I do like hard rock, um, but the fact that like every metalcore band is starting to experiment with like the mainstream rock stuff. Um, I think it's fine. Uh, I do like a lot of that stuff. I do like bands like I Prevail and Wage War 
and Fit for a King. I do like those bands, but I just don't understand why every band has to do it. However, if I were to say that a band should do it, uh, I think Architects would be a good candidate for that. Think of some of the other like core bands that have kind of softened out, uh, just as far as like their singer. Phil Bozeman of Whitechapel is a great example. Like they're definitely still a very heavy metal band, uh, but they're not really deathcore anymore. And that's because over the last couple of records, Phil Bozeman has really expanded on his vocal range and what he can do. And he's a good singer and he should be allowed to show that off. Then you have people like Ollie Sykes and it's, uh, I don't know that one. I don't think Brimway the Horizon is an example on this one. He still can't sing. But Sam Carter is a good singer, and they should be capitalizing on that. With that, and the fact that the first single they dropped, which was Animals, was a pretty killer song, I went into it prepared for it to just be a hard rock album. I was prepared for, like, no metal songs or only one or two, and I was okay with that because Animals was a good song, and because their vocalist is really good, and they should be capitalizing on that. And I'll admit, I wasn't as wowed by all the other singles. I think that Black Lung is okay. Probably my least favorite of the singles though. Dead Butterflies, I think is really cool. I do like that song. It's got a lot of Linkin Park vibes. And then also just like a lot of the like hard rock that I do really like, like bands like uh, Red uh, and Star Set. Um, they do a lot of the orchestral stuff on top of the synth and electronic stuff, which is on top of the traditional hard rock with like good heavy distorted guitars and all that. So Dead Butterflies, I think is a really dope song. Meteor, I didn't care for at first, but in hindsight, there are a lot of things about that song that I actually really like. I think the hook is cool. Uh, I like the kind of uh, orchestral moment in the bridge where they do the uh, thing. It's cool. So all of that gave me a little bit of peace when it came down to Architects, who are one of the best metalcore bands in a long time, are going to be making a rock album. So then it was time to actually sit down and listen to the album. So now we go into the track by track review. The intro track is called do you dream of Armageddon? And I gotta say, I don't care. I, <laughs> it really plays as an intro track. It's not even like the first song on the album. It leads into Black Lung. And my thing with intro tracks is I don't, like it's cool if they exist, but they need to either go somewhere, they need to set the mood, they need to bleed into the first actual song in the album. Any of those is fine, but I don't think that this track does really any of that. It does clue us in that there's gonna be some more electronic, uh, kind of like the moody pop kind of stuff. Like they did cue us into that's gonna be a reoccurring thing, but like that was about it. And it was short and it didn't go really anywhere. And it kind of made Black Lung not a hit. Leading into track two, which is Black Lungs. I think it's, uh, like I said just a second ago, I think it's an okay song. Uh, the chorus is really cool. I did learn how to play it on guitar and it's like, it's kind of fun to play. But overall, like there are just some heavier hitting songs and I just don't know if it belonged at the top of the album. like. I don't even know if it should have been a single compared to some of the other songs on here. Track three, Giving Blood. I don't know. I've listened to this album three times and I don't know if I could tell you much of anything of that song, actually. Track four, Discord is Dead. Like I said, I prepared myself for a hard rock album with little to no metal. So when we actually got to Discourse is Dead, I was pretty freaking stoked. Uh, first of all, Architect's guitar tone is great. That's true for the whole album, but it's really emphasized on the heavier songs. I will admit I am a Christian and when I, you know, hear this song and the lyrics, it's kind of like, I don't know if these guys have had bad experiences with religion or something, but it kind of looks like that they kind of just looked at like the really bad examples of Christianity, which I can't say you blame them, but at the same time, it's like you could do that with literally any people kind, whether it's a religion or a political belief, or uh, people probably look at metalheads like us like that, when really it's like for every one bad example, there's like 
you know, hundreds if not thousands of examples of good people who you'll never hear about in uh, in the news or anything. So I don't know, there is that, but overall it's a pretty cool song and uh, it definitely hit me pretty well because I wasn't really expecting anything that heavy. Track five is Dead Butterflies. I'll kind of skip talking about it again. I gave enough information just a little bit ago. Track six, An Ordinary Extinction. There are some elements that are pretty cool. I do like the synth work. The chorus uh, just has some sick vocals. But that's about it. Like I'm sitting here and I remember that the chorus is cool. But honestly, if I tried to emulate it right now, I wouldn't do it any justice because it just, it's not particularly catchy. It's just cool as far as the production and uh, their vocalist just being good. Track seven is Impermanence, which features the vocalist of Parkway Drive. I'm not a big fan of Parkway Drive. I should throw that out there as well. They do have a couple songs that I do like, um, but their vocalist is honestly pretty dang good and he does a great job on this song, but I also do gotta say that that's like the highlight of the song. The best part of the song is his feature. With that said though, again, it is like kind of nice that there is at least another heavier song. Track eight is Flight Without Feathers. This song actually has ended up on a few of my playlists. It's just cool, it's different. I like the dark moody pop sounds uh the vocal harmonies are especially really cool i will say it's it doesn't go very far i feel like it could have like grown a little more maybe brought in more guitar stuff or something but i feel like from where the song starts and where the song ends it could have just grown a little bit more not that it doesn't have any growth but like i would have liked to seen it like maybe it starts as a moody pop song and ends as like a, a rock song but it doesn't really do that it just kind of gets a little louder. <laughs> Track nine is Little Wonders, which features the vocalist of Royal Blood. Again, this is uh, one of those situations where the, the guest feature is the best part of the song. Uh, I do think Royal Blood are a killer band. Track 10 is Animals, which was, again, the first track that they dropped. And I think the general reception on the song was positive. There were some people who were like, why is this a rock song? Why aren't you guys a genty metalcore band anymore? Which I think is a fair assessment, but I think the general assessment was that it's a pretty good song. And I did talk about it a little bit towards the beginning of this video, so I won't spend much time on it. But one other th thing that I just want to mention is uh, that I really, really like the synth line that's in the chorus. Uh, it's kind of repetitive. Uh, and I'm sure if I heard it, heard the isolated tracks and just left that on loop, it would probably drive me insane. But it just adds some really cool texture and separation from uh, the, the guitar tone and the drum sounds. And it's just a really cool sounding song. Tracks 11, 12, and 13 are also just kind of like they exist. They're kind of rocky and they're not really particularly catchy. It feels like filler, which I mean, some albums are gonna have filler, but having three like kind of filler feeling songs back to back, it just doesn't feel good, man. It just doesn't feel good. Track 14 is Meteor. Again, I kind of already talked about it earlier in the video, but overall, I do think it's a pretty cool song. And then finally, we have track 15, which is Dying is Absolutely Safe. I don't know what the hell that means. It's a very dark, depressing, moody song though, which I am all for those kind of songs. And uh, I do like the acoustic elements of the song. It's pretty good. I will say you compare it to like some of the other like moody, slower songs that Architects has done over the last two or three albums. It doesn't really hold up to par with a lot of that other stuff, especially because uh, when I first hear it, I immediately kind of get the same vibe as like the uh, acoustic version of Wasted Him. And uh, Wasted Him is just a far better song, but uh, this song, like uh, Flight Without Feathers, has ended up on a few of my playlists just because of that moody, vibey texture. Oh, and I should also mention, there is a hidden track of them Rick rolling us. I'm serious, They're, look it up on YouTube. Uh, they have a hidden track on the album that uh, they Rick roll us. Something I forgot to mention, also, 
is that Architects are kind of the band that popularized the bad thing. And like, that's not on the album at all, which I, I don't particularly care, but the only time it's at all on the album is when they rickrolled us. What, what the hell is that about? So a few just overarching uh, thoughts and ideas and opinions. The album is way too freaking long. If you count that hidden track, it's 16 songs long. And you know, I mean, it's been over two years since they've had an album. So it's kind of natural that uh, they'd probably have a decent amount of stuff. And, th and this kind of music is easier to write than say, uh, you know, their last couple albums, but I don't think it needed to be that long just because they had those extra songs. If they're gonna be taking a bunch of plays from the playbook of the butt rock bands, something that the butt rock bands do that you don't see a lot in metalcore is that butt rock bands might write, you know, 15, 20 songs and only 10 to 12 of them will end up on the album. They're just gonna pick and choose the best ones. And that's how, even though people like to meme on those butt rock bands, they sell crap loads of albums. It's not even that it's too long, I guess, cause I have some albums that I love that are, you know, 15 songs long, but those albums feel more intentional. Whereas this could have had some fat cut off, you know? Not that I'm even for like, just give me 10 songs. Like if they're gonna do that, those 10 songs have to be like really freaking good. I do like my listening experience to be, you know, uh, maybe a little closer to an hour than a half hour. But, you know, like I said, I mean, there's, you know, probably four or five filler songs on this album. And I think it just would have been a more fun listening experience had they just, you know, cut it off. But there are a lot of good things. Uh, I do think that the general songwriting is good. It's a little generic, but it's pretty good. And uh, I think their vocalist is great. I think the production is spot on. I think the biggest kick to the balls for this album is that it's just a little too long and they didn't trim the fat. I'm not saying there's not any redeeming qualities about those like kind of filler songs, but like I just would have rather they didn't. Or maybe what they could have done is uh, maybe had those filler songs as like a separate like EP or something that they could have released in like a year or so, or they just announced that in August they're gonna have a CD release show. So maybe they could have had that come out around then. I don't know, like a B-sides thing or uh, had it more of a deluxe edition and those songs were in the deluxe edition or something like that. Just made it more digestible, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So overall, I'm gonna go ahead and give this album probably a B minus. And that really pains me to say because I think if you really look at Holy Hell especially, that's an A grade right there if in the metalcore world. Again, me giving this album a B minus isn't me trying to be like, well, this should have stayed a metalcore band. I don't really care. Like I was the guy who Linkin Park would make any album that they wanted to make and I still liked it because it was still Linkin Park and they still made good music no matter what kind of music it was. There's just better hard rock, you know? However, there are some songs that are really, really good. Like I said, the performance is really good. They are good musicians. They are good songwriters, so they have that going for them. And that's what kept them out of the C range for me. But again, I wanna know what you have to say about it. So let me know in the comments down below. And again, if you like the content I make on this channel, uh, make sure to subscribe. Like I said, I have a creative writing thing that uh, starting tomorrow and then through pretty much all of that week, um, I'm gonna have a new video on that creative writing thing every day. Uh, and then immediately after that, I'm gonna have a new installation in this series. So you will just have to subscribe in order to see what that album is. That is all for today. I will see you guys later.